Well, hello everyone. Welcome back. We're moving on to chapter 19. Are you guys ready? Are you sitting down with your blankie, your blanket, and maybe a scarf with your hot beverage? Here we go, chapter 19. That's your dad? Yeah, and by the way, he's looking at Constance. Let's just say I'm glad my mother's not here. I shot her a worried look. She patted my shoulder. I'm kidding. I think they're past that stage. She leaned back, and a thoughtful look came over her face. Is everything all right? I was just wondering when I last spoke to him. He never mentioned knowing Constance, and it seemed... And it seemed to be all everyone is talking about these days. He's supposed to be coming by, though. My mom usually makes a big meal on Sundays, and he brings over the leftovers. They're always worried I'm not taking care of myself. I chuckled. I know a little what that's like. You should stick around and ask him about Constance. He obviously knew her, she said, waggling her eyebrow. I don't know. I wouldn't want to be a bother. The sound of a book hitting the floor startled us both. My gaze snapped back over to the front desk. And sure enough, there was the ghost story Christina had been reading earlier, splayed across the floor. That didn't just happen, she said. Oh, but it had. And I knew just the ghost who was responsible. Clearly, Constance had some feeling about me speaking to Christina's dad. But I didn't want to freak my friendly neighbor librarian out with that bit of information. I must have left the book on the edge of the counter. You didn't touch the book. I did. I picked it up when you came around the desk. I wanted to get the title. Thought I might give it a try. She narrowed her eyes. You're working with the ghost, aren't you? We stared at each other for half a second before she laughed. Your face, I'm kidding. I don't really believe in ghosts. My grasp on reality is tighter than that. I laughed weakly. Back to your father. You don't think he'd mind if I asked him a few questions? Mind? My dad loves talking about his theater days. Don't be surprised if he breaks out into I am the very model of a modern major general. Wait. That's the Pirates of Penzance, isn't it? I have no idea what you're talking about. Bryn, we should hang out. Christina put her hand on my shoulder. I can catch you up on the last century. I'd like that. I helped pack up the microfilm, then headed outside. I would have to wait for Christina's dad at the library. But the first round of toddlers made their way f in for story time. And while they were certainly adorable, they were very, very loud. I wanted some time to think. Not that I really knew what it was I was supposed to be thinking about. Constance obviously wanted me to talk to her with her former co-star. And I just had to wait to find out the reason why. Initially, I thought I'd stay out on one of the park benches. But the crisp wind had picked up again, sending me looking for warmth. Ooh. I headed down the sidewalk when I heard, almost on cue, a loud creak in the wind. The sign of, the sign for charm treasures. I peeked in the front window of the town's only gift shop in Flores. Once again, I couldn't help but note it had undergone some changes since I had last been inside. Before all of the merchandise had been of the lacy and delicate variety, but now there were some new items added to the mix. Take the window display. The shop had always sold finely woven tablecloths, but now there were showcased flowing out from what looked to be a cauldron? Hmm. I opened the door. Instead of twinkling bells greeting me, a creepy laugh track started up. Well, I said to no one in particular. Yourself. <laughs> I took a quick look around before stepping further into the store. Hello? No one answered. 
I looked back at the door. The open sign was clearly up. Shouldn't be a problem if I looked around. I headed towards the refrigerator filled with flowers at the back of the shop, but was waylaid by the rows of handcrafted soaps stacked against the wall side. Those were new, too. As I walked over, a bouquet of scents greeted me. I picked up one of the individually wrapped bars and brought it close to my nose. It had a very unique scent, one I was sure I had smelled before, but I couldn't quite place it. I put it down and moved on to, onto a table covered with linen nightgowns. I placed my hand gently on the front of them. They were beautiful quality. The scallop trimmed at the bottom looked hand-sewn, but a little frilly for my taste. Next, I walked over to the glass case filled with jewelry, but before I even got to look, I, startled, I was startled by a short shriek. I spun around to see a wide-eyed, pink-haired girl with oversized jack-o'-lantern earrings standing behind the counter, looking obviously shocked to see me. I'm sorry, are you not open? Bryn Warren, she squealed. I can't tell you how happy I am you're here. Now it was my turn to look shocked. I'm happy to be here. I'm sorry, have we met? Nope. I waited for her to say more. But when she didn't, I nodded, then slowly turned away from the big smile she was giving me. Some of them are pretty pungent, but they do wonders for the skin, she says, her voice still overflowing with excitement. Sorry, I asked, looking back at her. The soaps? I don't know if you noticed them, she said, pointing at the shelf on the wall. They're new and all handmade. I bet you'd recognize some of the ingredients, though. She gave me a big wink. That was odd. I smiled weakly and tried once again to turn away. Listen, she said, her voice dropping into more serious tone. I just want you to know, I don't believe anything they're saying about you around town. A chill ran through me. I truly had no clue who this girl was or why she was being, she was so excited to meet me. But those were things I could let drop. Rumors around town, though, that was a thread I needed to pull. I'm afraid that I could cover a lot of different topics. Who is they? Liz Coleman, for one. She was in here yesterday. She's actually one of our best customers, she said. But once she started talking badly about your aunt, I showed her the door after I took her money. I gave her a sideways look. What exactly was she saying? The girl twirled the end of her shiny ponytail. Well, you know that the Warrens are a blight on this town. That you make people disappear. That you, I don't know, destroy cops or something. What? I practically shouted. That's ridiculous. Why would we do any of those things? I mean, how could we do any of those things? The clerk suddenly looked uncomfortable. I would have thought all of the previous stuff would have made her uncomfortable, but I guess we all have different tolerance. She shrugged. Well, you know, I straightened up. Unfortunately, I did know what she was getting at. Witches got a blight, I guess. But how did she know? What was going on here? I don't believe any of it. I mean, not the part about you guys being... She held it up her hand in claws and hissed cats no silly she hissed again vampires now you're just messing with me to some extent I was but I didn't mean to be it was just also shocking this was the kind of gossip people spread hundreds of years ago anyone who knew us knew that we only ever tried to help citizens of the town we did not make people disappear or ruin crops. The mere suggestion was absurd. Suddenly, I remembered all the planters with dead flowers at the end of people's driveway. I should be going, I said quickly. Sure, but come back. Any time. I'd love to talk more about things. Things? I hurried to the door. I almost made it outside when the clerk called after me. And tell your Aunt Nixie. 
I said hi. I spun back around in the threshold of the door. I just love Nora. She's my hero. I was glad to have a moment to myself but on the way back to the library. The sun had come out from behind the clouds and the wind had died again. But my mood had darkened considerably. I had found of the idea of Uncle Gideon's crow having a secret life amusing. But when it came to my aunt, the prospect was far less entertaining. Nora's my hero? Nora did not have friends, let alone fans. That being said, the shop clerk was the least of my concerns. Now that I had some distance, I found myself replaying my conversation with Mary. Again, she said Nora had always been kind to her. What could that possibly mean? And why had Nora filled us in on her relationship with Mary when the topic had first come up? I was not one to be throwing stones, given the secrets I had kept from my family. But I was starting to suspect Nora had been keeping more than a few of her own. And given the stakes of our current situation, that was, well, it was unacceptable. Now, if I could only tell her that in such a way that she wouldn't hang me by my fingernails. I was so distracted by my thoughts I didn't notice the man smiling at me from the picnic table in front of the library until I was almost right beside him. Bren Warren. I met the man's smile, taken in his kind eyes and white, bushy mustache. You must be Christina's father. Thank you for agreeing to talk to me. Ben Scott. But please, just call me Ben. He said, getting up to offer his, me his hand. I hope you don't mind me waiting outside. Christina filled me in. And I thought it might be less awkward chatting about my first love if it wasn't in front of my daughter. He jerked a thumb back to, at the library. Of course, I took the spot across from him at the picnic table as he sat back down. I'm sorry if I brought up an uncomfortable topic for you and your daughter. I had no idea that Constance was... I shrugged to find the right words. An old flame? I nodded. She was certainly that. If you'd asked me then, I would have sworn we'd have gotten married, but life had other plans. A touch of sadness came to Ben's eyes. It was a bit of a shock to hear she was gone. I'm so sorry. I let the moment pass before asking. Did you two meet doing community theater? Oh, no. Con Connie and I went to school together, but she was a year older. He waggled his eyebrow, just like Christina had. Older woman. I laughed. She wouldn't give me the time of day back in school, though. It took me a while to grow into the handsome specimen you see before you. I laughed. What was Constance like back then? I only met her recently. Connie was full of life. She had a voice of an angel, and she loved to use it. His face shone at the memory. Did you know Roxy? She runs the dance studio town. I do. Roxy was her idol. She had left for Vegas by then. I think Constance dreamed of doing the same. But she would have gone to New York. I promised to go with her. But it was all just talk. He leaned back, planting his hands on his knees. If things had been different, I think we both would have been happy with settling down and raising a family in Evanfall. If you don't mind me asking, what happened? Ben's face darkened. I'm sorry if, it, if it's too personal. No, I'll tell you what happened. Ben looked up at the oak tree towering above us. It was that family of hers. I've heard it was Rippard Sr.'s will that drove the family apart. That will was only the beginning. It's what they did afterwards. That was the real offense, and I'll never forgive them for it.